Assessing the Scientific Quality of a Mind-Matter Interaction Experiment Introduction In 2012 I reviewed a double-slit diffraction experiment. The experiment aimed to investigate the possible role of consciousness in collapsing the photon wave function, an idea proposed many years back. The Initial Idea Mathematician John von Neumann proposed in the 1930s that human consciousness could collapse the photon wave function at any point between the double slit and the observer in the related experiment. The Double Slit Diffraction Experiment This is a sample of commercially available double slits, with four of them having identical slit width, and variable slit separation. The experiment involves a red laser beam diffracted through a double slit. The diffraction pattern on a screen at a distance, d, from the slits displays a series of bright and dark bands. The bright bands contain fringes. The contrast of those fringes is sensitive to disturbances in the spatial coherence of the laser beam. If such disturbance occurs, the fringe visibility, v, of the diffraction pattern decreases accordingly. The experiment investigates possible disruptions of the beam's spatial coherence introduced, according to the hypothesis, by the non-physical interference of the participants with the beam's environment. A case of mind-matter interaction. The formula estimates the visibility, or contrast of fringes, V, in the central diffraction band, where I max is the light intensity at the center of a bright fringe and I min is the intensity at the center of a dark fringe. The experiment aims to answer the question, can participants mentally interfere with the laser beam's spatial coherence to reduce the fringe visibility? A case of mind-matter interaction The main concern is to record the fringe visibility, V, and monitor its possible decrease during the experiment, with a sensitive camera focused on the central diffraction band of width L. The camera in the experiment I reviewed in 2012 used 3,000 pixels in a line, each measuring 7 micrometers in width and 200 micrometers in height. Each of the 3,000 pixels registers the intensity of diffracted light at its location across the camera window. The computer uses this signal to plot the diffraction pattern. The experiment whose setup I reviewed in 2012, reported an inaccurate pixel height of 0.2 instead of the correct 200 micrometers. Reported experimental parameters were, the wavelength of laser light, the width of each slit, the separation of the two slits, the width of camera pixel and the distance of camera from double slit. The current investigation revealed a conflict between the reported experimental parameters and graphs and the reported distance, d. Familiarizing with the central diffraction band Each fringe in the central diffraction band gets a number. Diffraction theory determines the structure of fringes according to the fixed double-slit parameters. Inside the central diffraction band in the reviewed experiment should be 39 fringes, and the order of the, the so-called missing fringes should be 20. Here is a simulation of the diffraction pattern in the reviewed experiment. It reproduces correctly the number of fringes in the central diffraction band, 39, and the order of the missing fringe, 20. The fixed fringe separation delta in this simulation is 0.0157 rad. In the actual experiment the fringe separation delta is determined by the fixed experimental parameters small, d, capital, d, and, lambda. For precision of measurement the fringe visibility, v, is estimated on the fast Fourier transform power spectrum. The fast Fourier transform power spectrum derived from the diffraction pattern, displays a peak at frequency, fk. The peak position is fixed, predetermined by the fixed experimental parameters. 
63.6 Hz in this case. The fringe visibility is obtained through the parameter, R, which is the reduced spectral power at the peak with respect to the power at one unit of frequency. Let us observe how this is done. PK divided by P1 is 0.51, and the visibility parameter in this simulation is 0.71 as the square root of R. Note, the FFT power spectrum begins at zero frequency. In this case it is 5.22 times 10 to the minus 7, P0 relates to the total intensity at the camera window. Whereas, the spectral power at one unit of frequency relates to the light intensity passing through the two slits. Let us repeat those steps for the double slit experiment I reviewed. The reported separation of fringes was 69 pixels. The frequency scale on the reported power spectrum is in wave number units. The following unit conversion was introduced, one wave number is 1 over 3000 pixels. It assumed that the central diffraction band of width L covers the whole camera window of 3000 pixels. The conversion affects the peak position and must remain the same throughout the experiment. It does not influence the experimental result which depends on the height of the peak and not its position. It does not affect the beginning of the spectrum which is always at zero frequency. The peak in the power spectrum was reported to be at frequency 45 wave numbers that was confirmed also in text. Surprisingly, the power spectrum does not begin from zero frequency, but from one wave number. The spectrum appears unnaturally shifted by one wave number to higher frequencies. A careful examination of the reported power spectrum reveals A. The x-axis scale is divided into 10 equal partitions, each corresponding to 10 wave numbers. B. The beginning of the spectrum falls at one wave number instead of the expected zero frequency. A computer running the Fourier analysis would not shift the power spectrum to such a position unless it was instructed to do so. Let us bring the spectrum to its correct position. The consequence of moving the spectrum to its correct position is that the peak frequency is now at 44 wave numbers. Is the corrected peak frequency 44 wave numbers corroborated by the fixed experimental parameters? We can verify the accuracy of this spectrum shift using two methods. First method the peak frequency test. The spectral peak frequency FK is the inverse of the fringe separation delta. The reported fringe separation is 69 pixels, recalling the conversion formula one wave number is 1 over 3000 pixels makes the peak frequency 43.5 wave numbers which is not the reported 45 wave numbers. The reported fringe separation of 69 pixels cannot support the position of the reported peak frequency in the power spectrum. Such a disagreement confirms that the reported position of the power spectrum peaking at 45 wave numbers was incorrect. Or, was perhaps the reported fringe separation of 69 pixels incorrect? Let us first examine the correctness of reported fringe separation 69 pixels. We can graphically estimate the spacing between fringes delta on the reported double slit diffraction pattern. The graphically estimated average of the 28 available delta spacings on the reported diffraction pattern is 67.8 pixels, with 0.4 error of the mean. The corresponding peak frequency is 44.25 wave numbers. And the propagated error in estimating peak frequency from delta is 0.3 wave numbers. In conclusion, the peak frequency from the actual fringe spacing is 44.3 wave numbers with 0.3 wave numbers propagated error. The reported experimental parameters confirm that the power spectrum was correctly reinstated to peak frequency 44 wave numbers. The fringe spacing delta observed in the diffraction pattern and its corresponding peak frequency, FK, determined by the fixed experimental parameters small d, a, capital D, and lambda, 
remain constant throughout the double slit diffraction experiment. The central diffraction band was considered to cover the 3000 camera pixels. Is it correct? Based on the graphically estimated fringe separation and diffraction theory, the central diffraction band breadth is 2712 pixels with 16 pixels propagated error. The diffraction pattern appears asymmetric deficient of fringes at its ends. They are likely due to a slight angle of the slits relative to the vertical in the plane perpendicular to the incident beam and the presence of contamination of the pixel's surface. Second method, fringe visibility test. Both reported graphs diffraction pattern and power spectrum give an estimate of fringe visibility. If participants manage to mentally affect the laser beam's coherence, known as collapse of photon wave function then, the diffraction fringes will become blurred, causing I maximum, minus I minimum, to decrease. On the spectrum only the peak power will decrease. The two estimates of, V, should be equal if graph, B, resulted from graph, A. Let us carry out the two separate estimates. For the more prominent fringe number 1 on the right, reading intensities on the reported diffraction pattern and substituting to the formula for fringe visibility we get the value 0.60. For the 10 more prominent central fringes the average fringe visibility is 0.59, with 0.02 error of the mean. The fringe visibility is estimated again now on the reported power spectrum. On the reported power spectrum the fringe visibility is estimated twice. First, for the position of the spectrum as reported, where the peak frequency is at 45 wave numbers. The measure R is 0.025 and the fringe visibility 0.16. Second, for the corrected position of the spectrum, where the peak frequency is at 44 wave numbers. The measure R is 0.363 and the fringe visibility is 0.60. We have just estimated the same fringe visibility on the reported diffraction pattern. The coincidence of the two separate estimates of the same property of diffracted light confirms the correctness of the restored power spectrum. Interestingly, the reported power spectrum suggests, yet falsely, a reduced fringe visibility with reference its value on the diffraction pattern. Reduced fringe visibility may serve to indicate that the participants have mentally influenced the laser beam property through the reduction of the laser beam's coherence. How can a fiddled power spectrum simulate evidence of mind-matter interaction? The logarithmic spectral power decreases rapidly between frequencies 0 and 1 wave numbers. If the spectrum is shifted to the right by a tiny step delta f, the power at one wave number will increase as shown in the graph on the left following the equation. When the spectrum is at its correct position, no shift, delta f is 0 and the power at one wave number is 10 to the 7.84. and the measure is 0.363. If the spectrum is shifted to the right by a practically invisible step delta f, 0.4 wave numbers, the power at one wave number becomes 10 to the power of 8.3, and the measure, r, drops to 0.126. A drop of measure, r, is evidence for mind-matter interaction. How big is the drop in r for tiny shifts of the spectrum? The relative change of measure R, with tiny positive shifts of the power spectrum within the limits 0 and 1 wave numbers has exponential form. The maximum spectral shift delta F to produce a reduced fringe visibility is 1 wave number. Simply because a spectral value P1 at 1 wave number is always required. For instance the invisible twitching of a spectral shift delta F 0.4 reduces the measure R by 66%.
decrease in measure, R, is evidence of mind-matter interaction. This investigation revealed that several of the reported experimental parameters and graphs are problematic. What about the double slit to camera distance capital D? According to diffraction theory the fringe separation delta depends on distance capital D. On diffraction pattern delta equals 67.8 pixels. Substituting experimental parameters finds capital D equal to 15 centimeters. With propagated error equal to 0.09 centimeters, so, the distance of double slit to camera is 15 centimeters, with error 0.09 centimeters. But, the reported distance of double slit to camera was 10.4 centimeters. The direct effect of distance capital D on the position of the spectral peak. The fixed frequency of the spectral peak is inversely proportional to distance capital D. Substituting for the slit separation, D, and laser beam wavelength, lambda, we get. Recalling the unit's conversion formula where one pixel is 7 micrometers. The spectral peak frequency becomes inverse proportional to distance capital D expressed in wave numbers. We consider three possible distances of double slit to camera. Let us appreciate these results visually. The distance of double slit to camera is 10.4 cm bringing the spectral peak to 63.8 wave numbers. The experimental parameters and reported graphs do not support such case. The distance from the double slit to the camera is 14 cm, 10.4 cm was a typo, which results in the peak at 47.4 wave numbers but the data do not support such value of the distance capital D either. Finally, the distance of double slit to camera is 15 cm bringing the spectral peak to 44 wave numbers. A result supported by all reported experimental parameters and graphs. Reviewing the accuracy of an experimental setup in parapsychology may require related expertise in physics and mathematics, in a considerably time-consuming process, a task often not performed by journal reviewers. Interested investigators often limit their review to a statistical assessment of reported results, leaving the validity of generated data uninspected. Here is an overall evaluation of this double slit diffraction experiment, laser beam wavelength, correct. Double slit characteristics. Width of camera pixel. Spacing between central diffraction fringes. Distance of double slit to camera. Height of camera pixel. Quality of central diffraction band pattern. Correctness of power spectrum's position Frequency of main power spectrum peak An overall poor quality of experimental setup An imprecise experimental setup cannot detect slight changes in peak spectral power as evidence of mind-matter interaction. If changes in measure, R, have occurred during this experiment artificially introduced spectral shifts are their likely cause.